for a geography module back in the day, back in the day when I was in my youth at university, we were asked whether we believed that knowledge is all it took to influence behavior change. I, of course, at the time naively believed that, of course, if someone knew something bad was going to happen, that they could change, that they could influence in any sort of way, however small, they would. This is the same naive approach that is taken by two scientists in the film Don't Look Up when they discover that there is a comet hurtling towards the Earth. Just tell everyone and they will do the right thing. I don't want to critique the film from a film standpoint. I know nothing about movies. This isn't a movie review or critique channel. I'm here purely to talk about how the film made me feel. I believe the film was talking about climate change. I know this isn't a very popular opinion among film critics and they think it's not true, but it's true. I think that's that's it. Yes, a comet is a bit dramatic, but it is satire in the end and it is very in your face and that is the point. And they didn't have to make the film explicitly about climate change or else the majority of people probably wouldn't have even watched it. And if you're a person who's done climate research, read climate research, is poor in the West or lives in the global South, then climate change is like a comet in that it is staring you in the face and it is very obvious more intense rain in places, more drought in places, the comet is here. Don't Look Up to Me sort of summarizes how science communication has evolved and currently is in modern day media. The impending doom is watered down by charismatic right-wing newscasters or even debated as a is it real or not thing by politicians or running people running to be president of the most militarily equipped country in the world. All those concerned with the research attempt to share it in the best way they know possible, whether it's with some sort of optimism that things can be fixed, as represented by DiCaprio's character Dr. Mindy, or with panic and pessimism like Lawrence's character Kate DiBiaschi, or trying to go by the books and follow the rules and listen to those in power's protocols like Dr. Oglethorpe. If you haven't seen the film, I'd hate to spoil it for you, but none of these approaches went. DiBiaschi is immediately shot down as a hothead who is lying and is, of course, sprinkled in with bits of misogyny for that extra, extra flavor. Hey. 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 <laughs> well, the handsome astronomer can come back anytime, but the yelling lady, mm, not, so not so much. This is especially painful considering she's the one who discovers the comet in the first place. It doesn't help that, as any advertiser will tell you, or a media person will tell you or whoever, if you are selling a product, selling an idea, trying to get people for a cause, people do not like to be yelled at and people like to feel good. Being told that you are going to die and you are in denial does not make people feel good. A real life parallel I can think of to this is the props and protests of Extinction Rebellion, for example. They've done a lot of dramatic, sometimes racy protests in their climate action efforts, which are almost never taken well by the public. It isn't supposed to be taken well, it's supposed to drive conversation and action, but it mostly drives hatred from the media, which trickles down to general public opinion, because of course the media controls public opinion. And there is mock, there is loathing just like in the case of DiBiaschi. Dr. Mindy is the shiny comet optimist who's just happy to be there, just happy to be in the conversation, spreading the world, being platformed, and hopefully getting the message out there. His tone, his candor are very palatable and sprinkle in that extra white male privilege and you have the perfect spokesman. So many people platform him and get him to talk about the comet is coming, the comet is gonna ruin the earth and he brushes shoulders with so many powerful people, media people, but none of them actually help petition the government to do anything about it. Heck, he even becomes a White House spokesperson at some point. Now, I'm trying to think of a real life man who's dedicated his whole life to climate change and saving the planet and loving the animals and who's been endorsed by people and world leaders alike, even though the world leaders do nothing to solve climate change and they're like the main drivers of it. Um, I think the guy's been knighted as well. Um, and yeah, I can't think of anyone, but I'm pretty sure there's a guy. I'm thinking of a guy. There's a guy. Don't Look Up also explores the concept of celebrity and getting celebrities to endorse social causes um, with the character of Riley Bina, who encourages her fans to look up and believe that the comet is 
coming. The motivations of these characters in wanting to spread the message about the comet is of course irrelevant and instead the media, the media and the film, makes caricatures of them and moves on to other things considered more important. An impending midterm election and a recent celeb breakup, for example. And all other countries without the resource to even fight the comet are just left at the mercy of the dimwit president Orlean, who's more concerned about her own bottom line. To the climate analogy, the West is responsible for a large chunk of global carbon emissions, but it's the poorer countries south of the equator that are already taking the hit and just at the mercy of when will the big powers stop drilling oil so much. In the film, they never wake up and to the very bitter end, they put profit over people. I guess the painful part of this film for me is that for years I've thought, surely if people knew, if people could see it on their doorsteps if it was like right in front of them they wouldn't only care but they would force those in power to like do something about it and actually drop everything and just focus on let's solve this problem now and don't look up showed me that actually if the exact media rhetoric we had right now continues if we were all drowning or burning or otherwise they would still spin it as some oh don't listen to those woke liberals trying to take your freedom but the thing is these things have been happening for decades and broadcast as a short clip of floods in haiti followed by cute puppies rescuing a baby and it's a them problem and if you are experiencing said problems in the west it's either you haven't pulled up your bootstraps or whatever or hey here's this fun product you can buy to make yourself feel better in summary it's a slightly funny but very sad film to watch i sobbed at the last scene when the main cast is having dinner and their whole world is like collapsing around them not to be dramatic but i kind of cried and regretted that it was the first film i watched this year because it, that's not really how i was supposed to watch a feel-good film i don't know why i even clicked that i that's not how it meant to start the year. But um, I also felt like in the end, I would want to feel that in my work, on and offline, with friends and family, I want to know that I really did have everything and I did everything I could with it. Anyway, dramatics aside, please let me know what you think in the comments. Did you watch the film? Did you not watch it because of media, media criticism or because you don't want to feel sad like I felt sad watching it? Or do you just comment your thoughts? Just comment your thoughts below. And I guess, thank you for watching. I will see you next time. Very odd to try to be pleasant after having such a very uh, sad conversation. <laughs> Bye.